Norse mythology includes the religion and beliefs of the pre-Christian era, along with the legends of the Scandinavian people, including those who settled on the island of Iceland, where much of the written material of Norse mythology is found. The famous version of Norse mythology is the mythology of the Germanic peoples, which was formed from the mythology of the previously existing Indo-European peoples. Norse mythology existed mainly by word of mouth, mainly by the Vikings, so it was largely lost. In Norse mythology, the earth is a flat disk placed on the branch of the world tree Yggdrasil. Asgard, where the gods live, is located in the center of the disk. The only road to Asgard is the Rainbow Bridge, or Bifrost Bridge. The giants live in Jotunheimer, meaning land of giants. The dead go to a cold and dark place called Niflheim. Somewhere to the south lies the fiery region of Muspelheim, where fire giants live. Other supernatural lands are Alfheim, kingdom of white elves, Svartalfheim, kingdom of black elves, Nidaveller, kingdom of dwarves. Between Isgard and Niflheim is Midgard, or Middle Earth, where humans live. The beginning of it all in Norse mythology, there exists an infinite abyss called Ginnungagap. Ginnungagap exists between two opposite areas. In the north, it is covered with cold called Niflheim, or Land of Ice. From Niflheim, there is a well called Hvergelmir from which flow eleven rivers collectively known as Elivagar, Glacier. And in the south is the always fiery region called Muspelsheim, or the desolate land ruled by the giant Sutur tribe. When the fire of Muspelsheim melted the ice of Niflheim, that melted ice flowed into Gynungagap and merged with Elivagar to create the first creature of the universe, the giant Ymir, or Argelmir. From the sweat under Ymir's armpits, a pair of giant men and women were born, and from there were born the frost giants. The hoarfrost continued to melt, creating the giant cow, Audhumla. Ymir drinks cow's milk to survive and develop her race. Udhumla continued eating by licking the salt ice. One day, when the cow Udhumla was licking the ice, the ice revealed its hair, the second day it revealed its head, and the third day it gave birth to its entire body. From there, the god Buri was born. Buri gave birth to a son named Bori. Bor married Besla, daughter of the giant Boltthorn, and gave birth to three children, Odin, Vili, and Ve. As Ymir grew bigger and more cruel, the three brothers, Odin, Vili, and Ve, decided to kill Ymir. The blood flowing from Ymir created a cataclysm that engulfed the giants, except for the Burgomir couple who escaped thanks to the boat. Burgomir's descendants grew to hate the Aesir gods. Giants or Jotuns, also known as Thursar, Irim Thursar, Rizar, Bergorisar, or Troll, are all cruel people. From Ymir's corpse grew the divine tree, Yggdrasil, and the gods began to build the world. Ymir's blood formed seas and lakes, his body became earth, his brain became clouds, his bones became mountains, his teeth became rocks, his skulls formed the dome of the sky, overseen by four dwarves creating the four directions of east, west, south, and north. Immediately after Odin, Vili and Ve opened the world. They created the first humans from the trees on the beach, the man Oscar and the woman Embla. Odin gave humans breath and soul, Vili gave emotions and perception, and Ve gave senses and appearance. Humans live in a vast land called Midgard, Middle Earth. The Jotnar tribe often harassed humans, so the gods built giant mountains from Ymir's eyebrows to separate the giants from humans. Odin and the gods are in another place, at the center of the universe called Asgard. Odin is the supreme being and ruler of Asgard, and the Nine Worlds, known as the All-Father, or Father of the Gods, he married the beautiful goddess Frigg. Together, they later had children, and the most famous of them is the mighty god of thunder, Thor. To travel between the nine worlds, he created a magical bridge called the Bifrost that often appeared as a rainbow bridge. Watching over the Bifrost is the Heimdall gatekeeper or watcher of the gods. God, he has the ability to see through universes day and night. The gods live in splendid palaces and together govern the nine worlds. One of the most famous palaces is Valhalla, a place for warriors who sacrifice bravely on the battlefield, Shar. God Odin, 
also known as the father of the gods, plays the most important role in Norse mythology. He is the god of knowledge, war, and the possessor of the strongest powers. Odin is the supreme god in the Norse mythology system, leading and managing all activities of other gods in the world of Asgard. He often appears with a long beard, round hat, and blue cloak, married on the eight-legged horse Sleipnir. Odin's power in Norse legends is extremely powerful, diverse, and rich. Odin is said to have a comprehensive view of all affairs in the world, from the past, present, and future. As mentioned above, he was the one who contributed to the murder of Ymir and the creation of the world. He also conquered the Nine Worlds and quelled the giants. Under his leadership, all were able to unite and live peacefully. He owns two crows, Hugin, Thought, and Munin, Thought, which act as messengers to gather information for him. Thanks to the in-depth understanding of these sources, Odin can make strategic decisions and gain insight into every issue. Odin is a mighty warrior, possessing the legendary spear god Gungnir. Odin's strength not only lies in his outstanding martial arts ability, but each attack also carries magic. Odin can summon thunder, rain, wind, and many other supernatural phenomena to win. It can be said that he is an almighty god with unmatched power. The ability to transform is also a special feature of Odin. He can change shape, appearing before humans in many different forms. This allowed him to contact and interact with knights and characters from Norse legends without being detected. However, Odin's power is not without limits. According to legend, he always yearned to learn and acquire knowledge throughout the universe. He was famous for sacrificing one of his eyes so he could see the universe more clearly and craved the wisdom of he caused him to hang from the world tree Yggdrasil for nine days and nine nights until he was blessed with the knowledge of the runic alphabet. Through that arduous time, Odin was deeply aware and gathered invaluable knowledge from the world around him. In addition, Odin is also famous for his frequent battles and founding Valhalla. Valhalla is the final resting place for warriors who heroically died on the battlefield. These Chosen warriors are brought to Valhalla to get ready for Ragnarok, the final war. Among the gods of Norse mythology, few can match the popularity of Thor. With the image of a strong, tall warrior, red hair and bushy beard, Thor is the symbol of the power of thunder. He often appears flying in the sky in a cart pulled by two magical goats, with in his hand the magic hammer Mjolnir, one of the most powerful treasures of the gods. But the hammer had a short handle, so Thor had to wear a pair of iron gloves to catch the hammer when it returned. Thor's wife is the goddess Sif, second only in beauty to Freya. Their son is Modi and their daughter is Thrudr. Thor's stepson is Magni. Thor's sacred land is Thrudvang, Field of Power, where his castle called Bilskernir, Lightning, is located. Whenever the ancient Norse people heard a thunder, they would say that the god Thor was coming riding his goat-drawn chariot. In addition, he also has a belt that, when worn, doubles his strength. In addition, Thor's stories are also associated with another god, Loki the Deceitful God. He is often the victim of Loki's pranks because he has a very hot-tempered and thoughtless temper. A famous story of the god Thor is recorded in the ancient poem, The Song of Thrymir. One day Thor woke up and found his magic hammer had disappeared. He and Loki went to Folkfang to borrow the eagle-feathered cloak of the goddess Freya. Loki uses the shirt to transform into an eagle to search for the hammer. When he met Thrymmer, the king of the snow giants, he said that he had stolen Thor's lightning hammer. Thrymmer said that he was extremely rich and had all the treasures in the world and only wanted one thing, to marry the goddess Freya. If possible, he would return the hammer. Loki returned to heaven and went to tell Freya, but the goddess became so angry that the house shook. God Heimdall then suggested that Thor should pretend to be Freya and go to the wedding to get the hammer back. So Thor borrowed Freya's necklace and went with Loki to the land of the giants, disguised as Freya and her maid. Thrymmer was very happy and held a big wedding party, inviting all relatives to attend, but was immediately shocked because Freya ate an entire cow, ate salmon and drank three barrels of wine. 
Loki, in the guise of a maid, quickly said that Freya had not eaten for eight days because she was too worried about the wedding. Thrymmer glanced at Freya again, but only saw a pair of fiery eyes. Loki, in the guise of a maid, quickly said that Freya had not slept for eight days because she was so worried about the wedding. Thrymmer finally gave Freya the hammer, and Thor stripped off his disguise and used the hammer to kill the giant king's entire family. As the protective god of Asgard, Thor has had many heroic victories against enemies who wanted to invade the kingdom as follows. He defeated the giant leader Girador and his sons. In a wrestling match with the giant Hrungir, Thor defeated him. Thor is the only god who can arm wrestle giants. When the giant Skrymir came to challenge him, Thor used a hammer to smash his skull. Thor also fought the earthly snake, Jormungandr, and killed this monster. In addition, Thor also repeatedly confronted his sworn brother Loki and stopped his destructive plots. Thor's strength and courage have helped protect Asgard from countless dangers. In Northern Europe, people pass on interesting stories about Loki, the son of a giant but fortunate enough to be adopted by Odin, living in Asgard and making the divine world crazy with his knowledge, many incidents and disasters. With his unusual temper, Loki always enjoyed pranks to TC the gods and gradually became a dark, contributing to the end of the world Ragnarok. Born as a giant, but his body is too small for his species, so he is discriminated against in Shunid. Later, Loki was adopted by Odin and became a god in Asgard. Loki married Sigyn and had two children, Nari and Ali. Loki's family will be peaceful, and his lineage will be preserved in Asgard but a third person appears and causes chaos. Loki met the giant woman Angboda and combined with her to give birth to the three most terrible monsters in Norse mythology. These are the wolf Fenrir, the snake Jormungan, and the goddess of death, Hel. Right from birth, the three children were considered seeds and omens of disaster and destruction. So the gods captured them and detained them to avoid unpredictable consequences. The eldest child, Fenrir, was imprisoned by giant chains. He was very scary and grew stronger with each break of the chains. To imprison it, the gods created the Gleipnir chain, made of six things. The sound of a cat's feet, a woman's whiskers, a stone root, a fish's breath, a bear's tendons, and a bird's saliva. The chain was as strong and soft as a strip of silk and to tie Fenrir tightly, the god Tyre, god of battle, had one of his hands bitten off. Fenrir was imprisoned on Lingvi Island. The second child, Jormungan, was imprisoned by Odin and in the ocean surrounding the earth, the Midgard Sea area. It is so large that its body length is enough to wrap around the earth. The youngest sister, Hel, has a strange appearance with one half of her face shaped like a beautiful goddess and the other half distorted like a beast. Her upper body has flesh and skin like a normal person, but her lower body is rotten, rotten and smells bad. Hel is imprisoned in Niflheim. Hel and is responsible for governing the souls of those who die from old age and illness. Later, at the end of the world, Ragnarok, Loki's good children, escaped from prison and gathered together with their father to rebel against the Asgard gods. Loki is a master of transformation, often changing shape in different events, such as transforming into animals and humans. Loki in particular has a hobby of turning himself into a woman to carry out his plans. There is a story that Loki once disguised himself as a beauty to seduce Thor to sleep with him in order to steal the throne. Loki is known as a trickster who specializes in teasing and deceiving the people of Asgard with his superior shape-shifting ability a cunning, mischievous god who likes to play pranks and get the gods into a lot of trouble, so everyone hates and avoids Loki like evil. Loki loves to joke around and tease the goddesses in Asgard. Like Loki cut the beautiful golden hair of Sif, Thor's wife, and hid it, causing Thor to get angry and threaten to break his bones, so Loki ran to make a wig to atone for his mistake. Loki also turned into a seal and stole the necklace of the goddess Freya when she was sadly searching for her husband at sea. Then God Heimdall had to punish Loki to help Freya get the bracelet back. Loki is sly but not cruel. 
as he repeatedly helped Odin in building Asgard, contributed greatly to the construction of palaces and city walls, manage weapons for the gods. Loki found the ransom to rescue Odin and Huanir when they were held hostage by capturing the dwarf Andvari and tricking him into giving up all his possessions. Loki is not essentially a villain, but he does things that make people blame and complain. The relationship between Loki and the gods ended when he indirectly caused the death of the god Baldr. Loki tricked Frigg into revealing Baldr's weakness and then caused Frigg's other son, Hor, to throw a mistletoe branch at his brother, which killed Baldr instantly. After that, Loki disguised himself as the giant Pock to refuse to mourn for Baldr, causing this god to lose the opportunity to return to Earth and have to stay in Hell's Hell. To punish Loki, the gods tied him to three rocks. The goddess Skaui placed a snake on Loki's head. The snake venom secreted onto his head, causing extreme pain and terrible convulsions that made the ground shake. Loki's faithful wife Sigyn used bowls to catch venom. When the bowls were full, venom would drip on Loki's head, causing him to writhe and tremble. From there, each pain causes an earthquake. When Ragnarok began, Loki escaped punishment and created an army with a race of giants against the gods. Ragnarokans. Loki is collegued by Heimdallr. A new era begins with Leif and Leif Thrissir. According to historical records, there are no documents showing that Loki is a god worshipped by people. Historians believe that Loki is a character with many personality traits built as a villain for legends. Become more attractive. Loki is like two sides of creation. Bad and good, evil and good are all present in this god, thereby creating interesting and dramatic stories about the world of Norse mythology. Ragnarok is a series of apocalyptic events that herald the end of the world when ice giants and fire giants will join forces against the gods in a death battle that will ultimately destroy the earth, engulfing it. Under the Sea According to this legend, the world will rise to the surface again, the remaining gods will return and reunite, and the world's population will multiply from the only two survivors. Similar to the Christian apocalypse, Ragnarok presents a series of signs signaling the end of the world. The first sign is Fimbulvader, a long cold winter with continuous snowfall for a year. A red rooster named Fjallar will warn the giants about the beginning of Ragnarok. The second rooster will warn all the dead about the beginning of Ragnarok. Finally, a third red rooster named Gulenkambi, a rooster living in the royal palace of Valhalla in Asgard, will warn all the gods about the beginning of the end of the world. The human social situation at that time was described as follows. Siblings kill each other. Cousins often commit incest. The world is scary. Debauchery is rampant. The age of axes and swords. The shields were split. Time of wind and wolves before the whole world plummets to the bottom. There is no humanity left between people. The god Helmdallier will use his trumpet to emit a special sound that can echo all the way to Valhalla Castle, bringing the dead back to life so they can march to the Vigrid Plateau, the battlefield where the Dark War takes place. Queen, the ocean will be torn apart and the serpent Jormungandr, a snake so large that it can wrap around the globe and take its own tail, will rise from the depths of the sea to join the battle. The gods Baldair and Hard and will also rise from the dead to fight in this ultimate great war. Loki and his followers, along with the frost giants, will sail to the Vigrid Plateau to fight against the Aesir in a ship made from dead people's fingernails, like a ghost ship. All the monsters and giants, such as the fire giant Surtur, the dog Karm of the underworld Queen Hel, the wolf Fenrir, Fenris, and the leader Hrim of the giants, will form a mighty army against the gods. The outcome of the war is that God Thor and God Odin, and most of the gods, will die, and the dragons will breathe fire to destroy all life on Earth. But this is not the real end. Everything will arise again with a new species, and a new world will emerge from the depths of the sea. Two humans called Lif, female, and Lifthrazir, male, will be the ancestors of the new human race on Earth. The two gods, Vali and Vidar, as well as the sons of Thor and Honir, the gods who survived the war, will go to Idavol, a place that was not destroyed in the apocalypse of Ragnarok. 
The gods Baldur and Hodor will be resurrected, and a new era will begin. Humans have always been interested in the prospect of the end of the world since history began to be recorded. Stories involving gods, fierce battles, and fierce warriors give people the spirit to overcome life and difficult situations. Perhaps that's why the ancient Vikings had the confidence to live in cold weather and travel on boats that floated for many days at sea. Thank you for listening. What do you think about the story of the Norse gods? Please leave your comments below in the comment section and subscribe to the channel to support me.